member and bring in the absent members. The clerk will call the roll. Adams, Amiano, Anderson, Arambula, Bass, Bell, Billberry Hill, Tomberry Hill, Blakesley, Block, Blumenfield, Bradford, Brownlee, Buchanan, Caballero, Calderon, Carter, Chesbro, Conway, Cook, Cotto, Davis, De La Torre, De Leon, DeVore, Emerson, Ing, Evans, Fior, Fletcher, Fong, Fuentes, Fuller, Furatani, Gaines, Galgiani, Garrick, Gilmore, Hagman, Hall, Harkey, Hayashi, Hernandez, Hill, Huber, Huffman, Jeffries, Jones, Knight, Lou, Logue, Lowenthal, Ma, Mendoza, Miller, Monning, Nava, Nestande, Nilo, Nilsson, Norby, V. Manuel Perez, Portentino, Ruskin, Solace, Saldana, Silva, Skinner, Smythe, Solorio, Strickland, Swanson, Torlickson, Torres, Tarico, Tran, Belines, Yamada, Mr. Speaker.
Members, we are gonna be doing the annual Latino Spirit Awards this morning, and our awardees are already down here on the floor. Uh, we'd like to get the escorts down here as well and to start the meeting as soon as possible, so if members can come down to the floor um, as soon as possible, that would be appreciated. Mr. Calderon. Yes, Madam Speaker, um, how many bills on the consent calendar? It's one bill.
We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chamber and the gallery to please stand for the prayer. We ask our Chaplain Father Constantine Papadimos to offer the day's prayer. That's great. <laughs> Good morning, let us pray. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate the victory of Mexican bravery and love for liberty that is Cinco de Mayo, we thank you for your gift of faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have all been given a measure of faith, but it is up to each of us to put it into action. As our faith in you grows, Lord, help us to see the blessings you send upon us. Amen. We ask our guests and visitors to now stand and join us in the flag salute. Please join Assemblymember Mary Salas as she leads us in the pledge. Ms. Salas. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber, Sacramento, Thursday, April 29, 2010, Assembly Men, and I am an Honorable Fiona Moss, Speaker of Tim, the Assembly Presiding Chief Clerk, E. Dawson, Mr. Wilson, Calderon moves, and Mr. Hagman seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the Governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions. Uh, the absences for the day will be deemed read and printed in the journal. And Mr. Calderon, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I request unanimous consent to allow Assembly Members Fertani and Mendoza to have guests and photographers on the floor. Without objection. Uh, I request unanimous consent to allow Assembly Member Fuller to have a guest at her desk and a photographer on the floor during session today. Without objection. Also, I request unanimous consent to withdraw AB 2078 and AB 2721 by Calderon and Blakesley, respectively, from the Appropriations Committee and order the bills to second reading as they are no longer fiscal bills. Without objection. And I request unanimous consent to allow Assembly Member Mendoza to take up file item 137 SCR 103 by Cedillo, out of order. Without objection. And finally, uh, um, actually I have to go back and pick up one more. Uh, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow local government committee to meet and to hear AB 2065 by Mr. Calderon. Calderon I, I think we have to take that up after the second reading. Oh, you're right. I was, I was correct the first time. All right, last item is, um, want to remove file item 144 SCR 79 by Denham uh, off the consent calendar Clerk at his note. request. Members, without objection, we will now move to the resolution relative to Cinco de Mayo. Oops, Mr. Calderon. Um, we have one more item uh, to request unanimous consent to allow Ron Gonzalez, an editor from the Office of State Publishing, to observe the processing of the Daily Journal during today's session. Without objection. Okay, members, without objection, we will now move to the resolution relative to Cinco de Mayo, file item 137, SCR 103, Cedillo by Mr. Mendoza. Clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 103 by Senator Cedillo relative to Cinco de Mayo week. Mr. Mendoza, you may open. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, I'm here to present SCR 103. Uh, on behalf of the, uh, the California Latino Legislative Caucus, it is my honor to present uh, SCR 103. SCR 103 recognizes the importance of Cinco de Mayo, which is a day of celebration and hope for many Mexican Americans and all Californians to enjoy the fruits of freedom and liberty. Some order, please. Thank you, members. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Cinco de Mayo serves uh, to remind that the foundation of any nation rests on the spirit and courage of its people and to stand up and face adversity. 
We celebrate Cinco de Mayo in honor of the Battle of Puebla of 1862. In this battle, the outnumbered and poorly trained and poorly armed Mexican army defeated the French, one of the world's most powerful armies at, at that time. It, pro it, pro it provides an example of people who were willing to fight despite the odds and were able to achieve a great feat. Cinco de Mayo is a day to celebrate the heritage and achievements of Latinos throughout the, our state and our nation. It is a day to remember that Latinos have played a vital role in the economic development of the world's most powerful economy. It is also a day to recognize the brave men and women of, Latino, of the Latino community who have fought valiantly and have received a significant proportion of the Congressional Medals of Honor for Valor in defense of our nation. And the, the future strength of California will be determined in a great part by, by, by all of us valuing, respecting, and understanding languages, cultures, and histories of all rich and diverse people of California. Members, on behalf of the Latino Caucus, please help us honor this important day. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Furtani. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Members, I add my voice to the many that will speak up today about this very important celebration that we're about to embark on. Obviously, when we talk about Cinco de Mayo, we are only speaking of one singular day, but everybody well knows that it's symbolic not of a day, a week, a month. It's symbolic of every day of the year relative to the contributions of Latino Americans, Mexican Americans, and others to the great tapestry of California. The celebration that we're about to encounter really speaks to all the different facets and impacts that the Latino community has had on our society. If people needed to get a glimpse of that community, you saw it this weekend in Los Angeles. If people need to get a sense of its impact, look at the many legislators we have on the floor that have been elected from the Latino community and other communities as well. This is a great day, a great celebration. The Asian Pacific Islander Legislative Caucus adds its voice, its members to the support of this resolution. We urge and I vote. Thank you. Mr. Mendoza, do you want to close? Uh, yes, Madam Speaker, I would like to uh, uh, have the first roll call open for co-authors, please. Mr. Mendoza is asking for the first roll to be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. This is for co-authors, members. Co-authors. The clerk will note that there are 43 co-authors. Seeing no further discussion or debate, we can take a roll, a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. Mr. Cotto, would you like to come forward to the rostrum? Members, uh, we will now move to the assembly of observance of Cinco de Mayo. The, this ninth annual Latino Spirit Awards will honor distinguished Latinos to acknowledge their contributions and dedication to California and the United States people, cultural life, and economy. These outstanding individuals have made major contributions to our state and to the world. Uh, I would like to ask the Latino Legislative Caucus Chair, uh, one of the most respected Latino leaders in the state, Senator Gilbert Cedillo, and the Latino Legislative Caucus Vice Chair Assemblymember Tony Mendoza to move to the center aisle to receive our honorees. Members, I am now going to appoint a special committee on escorts to bring our special guests onto the floor for a presentation. As I call your name, please, ret or members, as please retire to the rear of the chamber 
at the appropriate time to escort your honorees. The members of the escort committee are as follows. Assembly members Tom Amiano, Marty Block, Ana Caballero, Hector de la Torre, Kevin De Leon, Warren Furatani, Mike Eng, Fiona Ma, Pedro Nava, Lori Saldana, Audra Strickland, Sandre Swanson, and Norma Torres, and Senators Dean Flores, Ron Calderon, Lou Correa, Denise Duchesne, Jenny Oropesa, Alex Padilla, Gloria Negrete McLeod, and Gloria Romero. No. Uh, go ahead. Mr. De La Torre. Mr. De La Torre, you are recognized. Is it right there? Mr. Speaker and members, it is an honor for me to stand before you today and uh, present the winner of the Achievement for Health and Communications 2010 Latino Spirit Award, Eliza Lifshitz. She will be escorted by Senator Flores and Assemblymember Torres. <coughs> Eliza Lifshitz, MD, uh, is the founder and editor-in-chief of VidaySalud.com, the largest source of health information and wellness tools in Spanish on the internet. Dr. Lifshitz has been the Univision Television Network's health expert since 1988. She currently hosts El Consultorio de la Doctora Alisa, a national Spanish language program on Univision Radio. She is also the health columnist for La Opinión, the largest Spanish language daily in the United States. Dr. Lifshitz was named by People in Español the 2009 uh, 25 most influential Latina. She, uh, and she was also named by the Hispanic Business Magazine in 1999 as one of the 100 most influential Hispanics. She was featured in the California Museum for History's Remarkable Women series, Latinas, the Spirit of California. Dr. Alisa Lifshitz.
Mr. De Leon, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. From activist to capitalist, philanthropist David Lizarraga is bestowed today with the achievement in business and community empowerment. Mr. David Lizarraga is president and CEO of Telecu Millennium, one of the nation's most recognized Hispanic business leaders. Mr. Lizarraga also serves as chairman of the board of directors of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce as head of the largest community development corporation in the nation with over half a billion dollar of assets. This man has been dedicated to his community since the very beginning of his humble roots in East Los Angeles. Throughout his career, this is a man who's been dedicated to the empowerment of those who have been marginalized both socioeconomically and politically in the larger Southern California area. The Teleku Educational Foundation is one of the most effective national institutions meeting the educational needs of Latinos today, not just in Los Angeles, Southern California, but throughout the state and throughout the nation. Mr. Lizarga also ha has the U.S. Small Business Administrator's Minority Small Business Advocate of the Year Award, as well as the NAACP's Thurgood Marshall Award. He was na named Entrepreneur of the Year by Entrepreneur Magazine, and was recently named among the top 500 business leaders of the year by Hispanic magazine, Hispanic Business Magazine. It was with much honor and pride that I recognize that we collectively as a legislative body, Mr. David Lizarraga. Members, I just want to acknowledge that uh, also joining uh, the chair and the vice chair of the caucus is our very distinguished Secretary of State, Deborah Bowen. Deborah, welcome. Thank you very much. And, and also with us, of course, is the equally distinguished new Lieutenant Governor, Abel Maldonado. Mr. Maldonado, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Saldana, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my honor today to introduce Enrique Morones for his achievements in human rights. Uh, he is an internationally recognized human rights activist. He was born in San Diego. His parents are from Mexico. And they instilled in him a very deep love for their country and a passion for social justice along with deep spiritual convictions. He has a long history of accomplishments. Among them, he was the first two-time president of the San Diego County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. He was the first director in Major League Baseball, along with the San Diego Padres. And he was president and founder of Border Angels, which is an all-volunteer nonprofit group he established in 1986. It places water and other survival materials out in the desert in the winter to make sure that people who are crossing through the most rugged terrain will survive that crossing. Enrique continues his human rights work and resides here in San Diego. He leads church services for migrants who are living in San Diego County. Uh, and he's also a constituent and a very good friend, uh, Enrique Morones.
Uh, Mr. Hernandez, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. It is with great pleasure to be here this morning to introduce Judge Frederick Aguirre for the achievement in judicial services. He is the grandson of a Mexican immigrant who settled in Orange County in 1908. Mr. Aguirre was born and raised in the barrio. An honor student, Judge Aguirre won a full academic scholarship to USC and then to the University of California, Los Angeles School of Law. In 1975, he and a group of Mexican-American lawyers founded what would become the Hispanic Bar Association of Orange County. One of their goals was to help Latino lawyers win appointments or election to the bench. He also created the Orange County Superior Court Leadership Academy, an annual program to educate the community about our judicial system. He continues to serve as co-chair. Today, he is an Orange County Superior Court judge. Please welcome him and give him a round of applause to the Achievement in Judicial Service, Judge Frederick Aguirre. Thank you. Mr. Solorio, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Assembly Member. I know everybody here would like to be on CNN, so pay attention. Uh, it is my honor to, in the area of media and political commentary, present Leslie Sanchez, author and former Bush presidential advisor. Leslie Sanchez is a widely sought after political analyst. She was part of CNN's award-winning 2008 election coverage. Sanchez is a founder and CEO of Impacto Group, a communications and market research firm which speci specializes in defining social and economic trends affecting women and the emerging U.S. Hispanic community. A veteran of numerous local, state, and national campaigns, Sanchez is known for her straightforward style and in-depth understanding of the political and cultural landscape inside and outside Washington, D.C. For her work, Hispanic Business Magazine named her one of our nation's 100 most influential Hispanics. It's my honor to have Leslie Sanchez here with us today. Congratulations. Mr. Arambula, you are now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to uh, present to you Richard Saldivar for the Achievement in Community Action Award. Richard Saldivar is the founder and the executive director of The Wall, Las Memorias Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting wellness and preventing illness among Latino populations affected by HIV AIDS. The Wall Las Memorias Project is noted for several highly visible endeavors, including construction of the nation's first publicly funded AIDS monument, hosting 
Strike Out AIDS, the first ever AIDS Awareness Day at Dodger Stadium, and leadership in the fight against crystal methamphetamine use. His leadership on HIV AIDS has been recognized by local, national, and international institutions for more than a decade. He's been recognized as a local hero, and it's our pleasure to recognize him today as the recipient of the Latino Spirit Awards, Mr. Richard Saldivar. Ms. Caballero, you are now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce Rosa Guamatautau Rios, Achievement in Leadership and Public Service. Rosie Rios has served as Treasurer of the United States under President Barack Obama since July 24, 2009. Ms. Rios a first-generation Mexican-American. Her parents divorced in 1974, and she and her eight siblings were raised in Hayward, California, solely by their mother. After graduating from Harvard, she developed strong roots in business and government in Northern California and became an expert in economic development. Rios joined the Treasury Federal Reserve Transition Team as the lead staff member for external stakeholder outreach on behalf of the Treasury. On March 18, 2009, President Obama officially nominated Ms. Rios as U.S. Treasurer. She was confirmed by the U.S. Senate on July 24, 2009. Help us to welcome Rosa Rios. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized, Mr. Calderon. Yes, Mr. Speaker, members, it's uh, my proud responsibility to uh, introduce to you Univision for Achievement in Media and Community Outreach. Uh, Univision Communications, Inc., the premier Spanish language media company in the United States, not only enter entertains Hispanics, but is an important member of the community. Uh, Univision Network connects Hispanics to their culture, resources, and to the marketplace through its television, online, and radio properties. Over the past three years, Univision Communications has contributed close to one billion to the community as well as provide more primetime airtime for public service announcement than any other network. The company is committed to empowering U.S. Hispanics and engaging in public affairs initiatives that improve their lives. I present to you Univision.
Before we, uh, before we uh, recognize Mary Salas, I want to acknowledge the uh, presence of one of our former assembly members and current member of uh, Congress, uh, Mike Honda. Mike, thank you very much uh, for joining us, Mike Honda. Thank you. Pleasure to see you. Now I'd like to recognize uh, uh, Mary Salas. Good morning, members, and today it's my privilege to introduce to you Xochitl Castaneda for her achievement in health and academics. Xochitl Castaneda is project director of the Health Initiative of the Americas, a University of California initiative that coordinates and optimizes health resources for Mexican immigrants and their families in California through collaboration, education, and training efforts. She previously served as professor and researcher for Mexico's National Institute of Public Health, where she also directed the Department of Reproductive Health. In 1999, she received the National Research Award on Social Science and Medicine. She has published more than 50 scientific works and has served as consultant for more than 20 national and international institutions. Please join in, in welcoming Xochitl Castaneda. Mr. Davis, recognize Mr. Davis, please. Huh? All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yolanda Gonzalez. Yolanda Gonzalez was born into a family whose artistic heri heritage dates back to 1877. She is known for her strong, bold brush strokes of color, texture, intent on invoking imagination and emotion. Gonzalez studied at the Pasadena Art Center College of Design after winning a painting competition that awarded her a scholarship to the prestigious school. This led to her self-help graphics, an involvement that lasted for years and resulted in her being sent to Spain and Scotland as a representative for ex exhibitions in those countries. Over the years, she has exhibited her work in solo and group ex exhibitions across the United States, throughout Europe and in South Africa. In 1998, she was an artist in residence in, G in Jinza, Japan, followed by a similar stint in uh, Assis, Italy, uh, during 1999. <clears throat> Among the many museums that have shown her work are the, Arma, the Armin Hammer Museum, the Geffen Contemporary at MOCA, the Japanese American National Museum, and the Diego Rivera, R Rivera Museum in Mexico City. Throughout the years, Gonzalez has taught at Inner City Arts, Paro Los Ninos, Plaza de la Rosa, Crenshaw Christian Center, and at MOCA.
Victor Manuel Perez, you are recognized. Thank you, Assembly Member, Mr. Joe Cotto. I stand in memoriam for Agustin Roberto Bobby Salcido. He is here with his family in the gallery, Mr. Carlos Salcedo, his father, his mother Graciela, his wife Betsy, his sister Griselda, and many other family members that are in the gallery now. He is represented here by his brother, Carlos Salcido. Bobby Salcido of El Monte, California, was only 33 years old when he was killed by armed gunmen while on vacation with his wife in the state of Durango, Mexico, on December 31st, 2009. Just weeks before, Bobby Salcido was sworn in for a third term on the El Monte City School District Board of Trustees. A native of El Monte, he started as a teacher, moving up to assistant principal at El Monte High School. He worked tirelessly to support community events, education, and the city's economic development as a founding member of the El Monte Coalition of Latino Professionals and was studying for his doctorate in education leadership at UCLA. Bobby Salcido cared deeply about the community of El Monte and the community cared deeply about him. His life is an inspiration to those of us who remain to fight passionately to better our communities and to support our youth. His death is a tragic reminder of how much is at stake. Please help me in welcoming in memoriam of Bobby Salcido, his brother, Carlos Salcido. Ms. Torres, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I stand in memoriam of Melinda Ramona Melendez. Melinda Ramona Melendez was born on August 31st, 1948, and passed away peacefully on January 20th, 2010, with her son at her side. A California native, Melinda was born in Danuba, where her maternal grandparents were the first Mexican family to settle in 1916. Melinda began her work on education policy in the capital in 1982, when few women or Latinas worked as consultants. Throughout her career, she remained focused on her commitment to the Latino community. She was a founding member of the California Center and the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project. She received numerous awards for her dedication and expertise. Melinda was a person of great grace. Her colorful sense of style and her contributions to education policy in California will never be forgotten. Thank you. Members, that, uh, that concludes our honorees. Would you ask all the honorees to please face the uh, 
members and uh, members, could we give them a big, big round of applause and tell them how much we appreciate all their work. Members, I also want to acknowledge that uh, uh, in the gallery we, ha and we have many guests uh, and, and friends and relatives or honorees. Let's give them a big round of applause. Welcome and thank you for being here. And in, uh, in the back of the chamber, we have El Consul Carlos Gonzalez Gutierrez, who is in the back of the chamber. Consul, thank you very much for being here. I'm going, to ask, uh, I'm going to ask the members who are here in front to please, uh, Senator, move over here to the right. Ask the members to move over here to the right. We have one more, one more special gift uh, for our honorees, some music. I'd like to call now on the Let's Welcome El Mariachi America de Sacramento as they perform Canción Mexicana by Lalo Guerrero.
about that? How about that for our honoree? Uh, members, uh, uh, members, I want to extend a uh, special invitation to all of you and also to our guests to please join the Latino Legislative Caucus members and their honorees as we celebrate the ninth annual Latino Spirit Awards this evening in a special reception at 5.30 uh, on the South Steps. Again, 5.30 on the South Steps, a reception for all of our honorees. Uh, we want to also announce that the, to the members of the media that uh, our honorees will be available uh, in the Willie Brown Room uh, right now, immediately after this ceremony. want to thank all the members of the staff, by the way, who helped organize and plan this very special event. want to thank the participants and the memberships. Uh, thank all of you members for your participation. Uh, and uh, we'll now take a brief recess, and this will conclude our ceremony. Thank you very much, members. Will I do it? Members, I'm going to go back to uh, some guest introductions. Ms. Buchanan. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members. I would just like to uh, recognize the fourth grade students in the gallery from Alamo Elementary School. Um, all five of my uh, children were graduates of Alamo, and I had the honor of being PTA president there more than two decades ago. So we have fabulous teachers, great parents, and great students at Alamo, and I just want to recognize them. Thank you. We'd also like to welcome to the chamber today Ms. Charlene Zettel. She's a former member of this body. Thank you, Ms. Zettel. Mr. Berryhill would like to introduce a guest. Mr. Berryhill. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, members, I'm here today. It gives me a great pleasure. I think, as, as everybody knows, it'll be May 10th. will be my 10th anniversary for my heart transplant. We have with us today Paul Kikorian's chief of staff, former chief of staff, uh, Bob Reed. And Bob received a heart December 18th at uh, UCSF Medical Center. Bob is with us today in the back. If you want to go uh, give him a big round of applause, he's a very lucky man. He's got a brand new heart. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. And Miss Fuller has a guest also. She'd like to recognize Miss Fuller. I'm celebrating Mother's Day early. I have my mother, Wilma Dean Yinks Gunther, with me. And her friend, Dolores McGill, and her friend, Pat Sumner, and my husband, Russell Fuller. I want to thank my mother especially today for my smile and for my common sense. Common sense, it turns out, was not something I arrived with when I was born, but was acquired over the years with my mother. And Dolores, thank you for all of the store-bought clothes that she gave to my mom to remodel for me for every dance. Thank you. Mr. Furutani. Mr. Furutani has special guests here today. You're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Members, we are in this time of the year where things tend to get a little bit crowded and there was a bit of a scheduling issue relative to the start of Asian Pacific Heritage Month, which is May, and Cinco de Mayo. But I thought, what the heck, let's just mesh them together, fuse them together, and to make sure I was going to sing E Volver, Volver, to make sure everybody in the Latino community felt at home. So, E Volver, vo no, I'm sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> and to make sure that everybody felt comfortable with this bringing together. Who better to connect the Latino Mexican American community with the API community other than Congressman Mike Honda? Mike, come over here. Mike, come over here. 
So what we wanted to do today is kick off Asian Pacific Heritage Week. We are going to have more honorees next Monday, but we wanted to honor a very special group today. Some of you know them because they're from East LA actually originally, but in terms of their work, they started during a period of time 30 years ago when we had all the garage bands. You remember those days. I think that's where Los Lobos and El Chicano and Tower of Power, all these different groups started out, where our community and the API community did the same thing. We had a group at that time that started out, but they took the name Hiroshima. And the reason they took the name Hiroshima is because of for political reasons. And as a result of that, they, for 30 years, and their most recent DVD is called Legacy, and that clearly puts forth where, in fact, they are in their career. Not that they're done, but they have a legacy of 30 years of recording for first Arista and then Wyndham Hill. And during that time, they have recorded over 17 albums, and they are noted for jazz fusion. Sometimes they call it easy listening. You use any description you want, but I'm here to tell you it is absolutely not bad, no, never mind, I won't say that word. Great jazz music. They have been able to integrate different instruments in with regular jazz instruments, and as a result of that, their fusion, sometimes I understand Dan calls it a bit of a mishmash, a bringing together of a world perspective on music, where they do the American idiom of jazz, and they have this fantastic implementation and integration of koto music, koto music. They have also used other Japanese instruments like the taiko drum. Many of you are familiar with the taiko drum. And they brought together also a sort of Pacific Islander Hawaiian piece to it. So they have this jazz music that has come together. It's in the form of their latest DVD called Legacy. And if you go to the reception off to the floor right now, we're going to give away the new DVD legacy that anybody wants it. I was going to put it on all of your desks, but I know we got this problem with gifts these days. So if you want a DVD, and you won't have to report it, it's not that expensive, but come to 317 for a reception and for a free DVD. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you, and I'm glad that my good friend Mike Honda is standing with me, and I've asked the API Ledge Caucus members to come and bring them down here to the front of the session floor to give them this resolution. Ladies and gentlemen, the founders of Hiroshima, Dan Kuromoto and June Kuromoto, and also the backbone of the band, Kimo Cornwell. We have three of the seven members. They are known for jazz fusion. If you do any kind of jazz listening, you've heard them. They've opened up for Miles Davis. They've been in every venue imaginable. We were going to have them perform, not that it was going to conflict with the mariachis. We were going to have them perform, but they are on tour right now. So the Koto, I understand, is in another part of the state, so we couldn't get it all together. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Kermoto, Jern Kermoto, Kimo Cornwell, Hiroshima! And Hiroshima is escorted by Assembly Members Hayashi, Yamada, Eng, and Tran of the API Caucus.
Members, we are going to go to our daily file. Uh, business on the daily file, second reading, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1930, 2202, 2515, 21, 20, 24, 18, 22, 29, 21, 37, 24, 88, 25, 30, 26, 89, 27, 95, 21, 03, 21, 82, 25, 54, 26, 72, 1755 with amendments 2600, 26, 15, 26, 16, 27, 06, 27, 85, 27, 89, 21, 44, 21, 56, 22, 10, 22, 12, 22, 24, 24, 33, 26, 10, 26, 12, 26, 45, 26, 51, 26, 75, 26, 86, 26, 701, 2746, 1729, 1732, 1760, 1813, 1838, 1846, 1888, 1891, 1933, 2000, 2028, 2031, 2101, 2116, 2134, 1597, 1756, 1914, 1996, uh, 2007, 2037, 2076, 2080, 2274, 2279, 2283, 2328, 2351, 2357, 2358, 2419, 2482, 1648 with amendments, uh, 2001 with amendments 2177 with amendments 2300 with amendments 2535 with amendments 1770 with amendments 2065 with amendments 2508 with amendments assembly joint resolution 27 with amendments assembly bill 2309 with amendments 2767 2780 2783 2786 2147 with amendments and assembly bill 2240 with amendments all bills will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted motions and resolutions mr calderon yes um Madam Speaker, members, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow local government committee to meet and to hear AB 2065 by Calderon and AB 2508 from Caballero on Wednesday, May 5, in room 127 at 1.30 p.m. Without objection. Also, uh, Madam Speaker, members, I request unanimous consent to waive the four-day four file notice to allow Utilities and Commerce Committee to hear AB 2690 by Mr. Della Torre today at 3 p.m. in room 437. Mr. Hagman, for what purpose do you rise? Thank you, Madam Chair. We do oppose this uh, motion with a request a roll call vote. Motion by Mr. Calderon, seconded by Mr. Fuhr. This motion is not debatable. Mr. Hagman requested a roll call on this motion. The clerk will open the roll on the motion. Mr. Calderon is asking for an aye vote. Mr. Hagman is asking for a no vote. All members vote who desire to 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 vote. Mr. Calderon moves the call. Okay, members, we are moving to the daily file now. So concurrence items, file item 85, pass and retain, file item 86, AB 585, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 585 by Assembly Member Cook, an act relating to deceased personality. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Existing law prohibits the use of a deceased personality's name, voice, signature, photograph, or likeness without consent on merchandise or goods, products, or services for 70 years after the death of the personality. AB 585 is a very simple build that uh, amends the definition of deceased personality to include persons whose names, likenesses, and other characteristics have commercial value because of their death. The Senate amendments of April 21st changed the author and added a boilerplate serviceability clause. Last week, this bill passed out of the Senate unanimously. I ask for your concurrence with these Senate amendments. Thank you.
Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 56, no zero, the measure passes. Senate amendments are concurred. We're gonna go to third reading. Members, file item 90 through 97, pass and retain. File item 98, AB 1883, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1883 by Assembly Member Evans, an act relating to domestic violence. Ms. Evans is not present, so we are gonna pass temporarily. File item 99, pass and retain. File item 100, AB 2432, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2043 by Assembly Member John A. Perez, an act relating to food facilities. Mr. Monning will present on behalf of Speaker Perez. Mr. Monning. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, on behalf of Speaker Perez, I'm pleased to present AB 2432, which will establish a statewide standard to permit non-grocery retailers to sell prepackaged, non-potentially hazardous food products, such as candy and bottled water, without requiring compliance with food safety laws applicable to grocery stores and restaurants. This bill is needed to avoid a repeat of an LA County decision to require Home Depot to remodel and retrofit stores to meet restroom requirements for food facilities. Food facilities have appropriately stringent standards since food is prepared on site. Counties have exemptions for stores that sell less than 10 square feet of prepackaged food items. This tiny square footage works for many retailers, but is inadequate for many of today's large retail stores, such as Home Depot and Best Buy. The sponsor of this bill, California Retailers Association, along with the California Conference of Environmental Health Directors, are currently working together to develop consensus language to define a statewide threshold for incidental sales of prepackaged, non-potentially hazardous foods, but they do not have that agreement finalized yet. On behalf of the speaker, I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will, call, will, will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Aye 68, no zero, measure passes. File item 101, pass and retain. File item 102, AB 1745, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1745 by Assembly Member Amiano, an act relating to vital records. Mr. Amiano. Thank you, Madam Clerk and members. I'd like to present AB 1745. This bill would allow counties to charge an applicant for an application and permit for the disposition of human remains an additional fee up to $8. In San Francisco alone, approximately 250 to 300 indigent residents die every year. The financial burden for the burial services of these indigent residents is placed on the counties. The, this bill addresses the insufficient funding source at the county level to help absorb the cost for the disposition of the remains of indigent residents. This bill is sponsored by the city and county of San Francisco and other supporting organizations, including the, Ca the California Correctional Supervisors Organization, the California Peace Officers Association, and the California Police Chiefs Association. The local, the um, disposition will give the counties the ability to raise the fee depending on their specific need. I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Mr. Amiano call, um, moves the call. File item 103, pass and retain. File item 104, AB 2068, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2068 by Assembly Member Hill, an act relating to expungement standards. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. This bill authorizes the court in the interest of justice to expunge the record for a misdemeanor conviction of a person who has not received probation. Let's be clear. 
This bill and existing law does not seal, destroy, or remove convictions from an individual's existing rap sheet. All this relief is similar to the, that provided to specified misdemeanors and felons who have received probation under current law, as well as to misdemeanors who have not received probation and withdraw their plea or have their plea set aside. An expungement is not a get out of jail pass. A conviction that is expunged remains on the individual's rap sheet and can be used as a prior for future prosecutions. This bill will help people who have proven their rehabilitation to further integrate into society through expanded work and housing opportunities. By increasing access to employment, AB 2068 helps reduce the rate of recidivism and makes our communities safer. Thus, AB 2068 seeks to give these deserving people a chance to continue to fully reintegrate back into society and become productive citizens. According to a letter from the Judicial Council, this bill has minor costs that will be, uh, will be absorbable in existing resources. I ask for your eye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Mr. Hill moves the call. File item 105 through 108, pass and retain. Actually, we're going to go back to file item 98, AB 1883. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1883 by Assembly Member Evans, an act relating to domestic violence. Ms. Evans. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Members, this bill authorizes county boards of supervisors to authorize an increase in fees up to $4 for certified copies of certain vital records. Um, this, would this authorization would last until January 1, 2016. Um, under this legislation, one half of that fee increase would be allocated to domestic violence prevention, intervention, and prosecution efforts within the county, and the other half would be allocated to nonprofit, community based organizations that serve domestic violence victims and their families. In recent years, as I'm sure many of you know, the legislature has authorized counties to do this on a pilot basis. Uh, to four counties separately uh, in separate legislation. And those four counties are Contra Costa, Alameda, Solano, and S uh, Sonoma counties. Rather than continuing this piecemeal approach, this legislation seeks to allow the expansion of the program statewide by giving all counties the authority to do this. And I would ask for your I vote. Seeing no questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Ms. Evan moves the call. File item 105 through 108, pass and retain. File item 109, AB 1649. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1649 by Assembly Member Chesbro and others, an act relating to alcoholic beverages. Mr. Chesbro. Madam Speaker and members, uh, AB 1649 simply clarifies the law relating to conditions under which a winery must purchase a separate distilled spirits manufacturer's license. The bill's, bill also contains other cleanup and clarifying provisions relating to the production of wine and tasting room sa uh, sales. The bill is supported by the Wine Institute and the family winemakers. It passed uh, unanimously out of GO and appropriations. Uh, I would urge your unanimous I vote. Seeing no questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-71, no zero, measure passes. File item 110 and 111, pass and retain. File item 112, AB 1860, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1860 by Assembly Member Tom Berryhill, an act relating to alcoholic beverages. Mr. Berryhill. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker and members. Uh, AB 1860 will allow all county offices of education and school districts to hold events with alcohol on the grounds of an overnight retreat facility when no pupils are not present. It has received no opposition. <laughs> this was not read, this was not put, with, with no uh, students present. It is very similar, members, just to keep everything clear here, 
It is to last year's AB 1448, which allowed Tennessee County to permit such events. This bill will help keep outdoor education facilities open, and it, again, it has received no opposition. I urge and I vote. Seeing no questions or debate, all members who are not present, please vote. <laughs> Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 70, no zero, measure passes. File item 113, pass and retain. File item 114, AB 2297, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2297 by Assemblymember Brownlee and Act relating to community colleges. Ms. Brownlee. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Unlike the University of California and the California State University systems, community colleges in California are not allowed to establish their own non-resident foreign student tuition policies. AB 2297 provides a mechanism for a community college to increase its current level of non-resident inter international tuition. AB 2297 has the potential of delivering as much as $45 million for the community college system. That revenue could go a long way in improving the quality of education for all community college students here in California. AB 2297 is supported by uh, Santa Monica Community College and the Community College League of California. It has won bipartisan support in both the Assembly Higher Ed uh, Committee and the Assembly Appropriations Committee, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, noes 8, measure passes. File items 115 and 116 pass and retain. File item 117, ACR 116. Clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 116 by Assemblymember Hill relative to California Lab Day. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, and members. ACR 16 is authored by members of the Select Committee on Biotechnology and promotes science education in California schools. The resolution proclaims May 12, 2010 as California Lab Day in conjunction with National Lab Day and declares our support for students of all ages who are interested in STEM education, which includes science, technology, engineering, and math. If California is to remain a world leader in the biotech and high-tech industries, it's crucial that we reinvigorate STEM education in our schools and after-school programs. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Mr. Hill, would you like co-authors? Mr. Mr. Hill is asking for the first roll to be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. This is for co-authors, members. Co-authors. Clerk will note there are 60, 70 co-authors. Seeing no further question or debate, we can take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, the measure is adopted. File item 118 and 119 pass and retain. File item 120, AB 1740, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1740 by Assembly Member Jeffries, an act relating to vehicles. Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, California is known for many great things, one of which is our love of hot rods and custom cars. From the likes of Jay Leno to the neighbor next door, no other state in the nation competes with California's creative car builders, car collectors, or car cruisers. Custom car shows across California pump millions of dollars into our economy and thousands of jobs building, customizing, maintaining, re and repairing those cars. This bill, 1740, recognizes that not all cars are created equal, especially the custom cars, the kit cars, Frankly, they are unlike any other car that will roll off of a factory line. AB 1740 simply s says that of the roughly 23 million registered vehicles in California, 750, that's 750 of these specialty constructed custom cars will be allowed to register without having to meet the very tough emission standards that we impose on factory built cars. Members, as many of you know, the vast majority of these beautiful custom cars are stored in garages waiting for the sun to come out for a weekend car show. AB 1740 has enjoyed bipartisan support in each of its committee hearings. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. 
All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Mr. Jeffries moves the call. File item 121, AB 2114, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2114 by Assembly Member Bell, an act relating to aging. Mr. Bell. Madam Speaker, members, the federal government has not updated the federal poverty level since the 1960s. This means we are using inadequate data to determine the needs of our seniors. The bill fixes that by requiring the Department of Aging to use updated data for the cost seniors face in meeting their basic needs. The department estimates this bill will have negligible cost and will save up to 80 hours of staff time. Members, we have about 88 million baby boomers that will soon be impacted by what data we use to determine their basic needs. It's our moral obligation and our fiscal obligation to use the best data available to address this issue. The bill is supported by just about every senior organization in the state, and I think we should listen to our vocal, active, and politically aware constituents. I urge that I vote. Ms. Yamada. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I rise in strong support of AB 2114. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the gap between uh, the accurate data uh, and the services that are required for this graying population of California is going to fall squarely on the shoulders of California taxpayers. It makes the most sense possible to get the most accurate data possible so that we can uh, advocate on behalf of the resources that are needed to, um, to provide for these very vulnerable populations. This bill made it to the governor's desk last time there is no reason that we should be afraid of important and accurate information. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 47, noes 15, measure passes. File item 122, AB 2435. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2435 by Assemblymember Bonnie Lowenthal, an act relating to elder independent adult abuse. Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mental health care providers are key to stopping elder and dependent adult abuse and helping families in crisis. This bill requires MFTs, psychologists, LCSWs, and licensed professional clinical counselors to have training on the recognition and reporting of suspected elder and dependent adult abuse. Unfortunately, while state law requires degree programs for these professions to include training in the biological, sociological, and psychological aspects of aging, it is silent on the inclusion of elder and dependent adult abuse. The goal of this bill is not to place additional requirements on licensees, but instead to codify in state law the existing education and training on elder and dependent adult abuse recognition and reporting. The bill has received unanimous support to date. There is no opposition. I respectfully request your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 62, noes 3, measure passes. File item 123, AB 2294, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2294 by Assembly Member Block, an act relating to pedicab. Mr. Block. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 2294 is an important measure for the city of San Diego. It arose out of a heartbreaking incident that occurred last summer. On July 4th, 2009, tragedy struck in San Diego when a pedicab passenger was fatally injured when she fell out of a recklessly driven pedicab. The incident renewed efforts to enhance the city's pedicab ordinances, and while the city strengthened its local laws, one critical component of pedicab regulation could not be accomplished without authorization in state statute. AB 2294 provides the explicit authority for the County of San Diego, or cities within the County of San Diego, 
to require that pedicab operators obtain a California driver's license as part of the local jurisdiction's permit. Pedicab operate, pedicabs operate within the flow of vehicle traffic, transporting passengers for hire. Passengers put their lives in the hands of the operators, and it is the duty of the state to protect innocent third parties. It is necessary for commerce that the state play this role. The bill authorizes local control of the issue and is an important public safety measure requested by the City of San Diego. Jointly authored by Assemblymember Fletcher, AB 2294 has received bipartisan support in committee without any no votes. I ask for your I vote on this important public safety measure. Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, members, this legislation uh, as was pointed out by Mr. Block, is sponsored by the City of San Diego, will allow better protection for our residents, for the tourists, for the people of San Diego. It uh, gives local government the right to better control uh, and oversee uh, this entity, which is very large in the City of San Diego, and would like to uh, request your I vote. See no further questions or debate. Clerk will call the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Aye, 67, no, zero. Measure passes. File items 124 and 125, pass and retain. File item 126, HR 23. Clerk will read. House Resolution 23 by Assemblymember Monning relative to pesticides. Mr. Monning. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I present to you today House Resolution 23, which is legislation regarding the disclosure of inert ingredients in pesticides. Specifically, H.R. 23 urges the governor to protect public health and the environment by requesting the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to move quickly on its proposed plan they announced last year to require the disclosure of inert ingredients in pesticides. Federal and state law currently require pesticide manufacturers to disclose the ingredients of industrial chemicals only if they are classified as active ingredients. However, more than 99% of the ingredients in certain pesticides are designated as inert, so they are never disclosed to the public. This issue is of particular importance to me since two of the counties I represent, Monterey and Santa Cruz, were affected by the aerial pesticide eradication efforts to treat the light brown apple moth in July of 2009. The failure to disclose the inert ingredients used in the aerial spraying left lingering concerns about health implications, confusion, and suspicion on the part of many of my constituents. This should never happen again. As I close, I also want to point out that language is included in the resolution that would exclude information absent of finding that disclosure of a particular ingredient will cause competitive harm for proprietary protection. There's no opposition on file. I ask for your aye vote. Mr. Monning, would you like co-authors? Mr. Monning is asking for the first roll to be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. This is for co-authors, members. Co-authors. Clerk will note there are 43 co-authors. Seeing no further questions or debate, we can take a voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The measure is adopted. File items 127 through 130, pass and retain. Members, we are done with business on our daily file. There are a number of bills on call. Uh, we're just gonna lift them in order. So members, anybody not down here, please come down immediately. We are gonna lift calls on the bills that are remaining. File item 102, AB 1745, Amiano, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 44, noes 29, measure passes. 
File item 104, AB 2068 by Mr. Hill. Clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 43, noes 26, measure passes. File item 98, AB 1883 by Ms. Evans. Clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 44, noes 28, measure passes. And file item 120, AB 1740 by Mr. Jeffries. Clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. I took the speaker off. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 42, noes 20, measure passes. We have the motion to suspend the file waiver requirement. On the motion, clerk will post. Mr. Calderon asks for an aye vote. Mr. Hagman asks for a no vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 44, noes 29. File item is waived. We are at the second day consent calendar. Does any member wish to remove an item from the second day consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2016 by Assembly Member Torres, an act relating to common interest developments. Clerk will open the roll on the consent calendar. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 73, no zero, the consent calendar is adopted. This concludes the business on the daily file in the regular sessions. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. The session schedule is as follows. Tuesday, May 4th, check-in. Wednesday, May 5th, check-in. Thursday, May 6th, floor session at 9 a.m. There are no adjourn in memories today. And I am ready to entertain a motion to adjourn, Mr. Calderon moves. Mr. Hagman seconds that this house stands adjourned until Thursday, May 6th at 9 a.m. Quorum call is lifted. Yeah, I have to change. Sorry. Parkey vote change. File item 122. Hold on. Oh, okay. Harkey, vote change, file item 122, AB 2435, no to I. Harkey, Assembly Bill 2435, no to I. Adams, vote change, file item 104, AB 